Welcome back to Coxie Tutorials. This is part 3 in our first person shooter tutorial series. Today we're going to be setting up the very basics of our first gun and I've gone ahead to the uh, assets store and I've got this pistol here. I just typed in pistol and chose free and I've selected this pistol here, this uh, PBR material Makarov and this is a really good model because it's actually got separate meshes on it so um, there's parts of this pistol that can be detached from the rest of the body of the pistol which will allow us to actually animate this later on so I suggest you get this pistol if you want to follow along or just grab another pistol and try to make sure that it's actually not just one mesh it's actually got parts that can move and be detached okay so since our last tutorial number two of the only difference between my game and your game is probably I've made a few folders I've made an asset store folder to put the stuff from the asset store an audio folder for our sand, sound clips and also a scripts folder for our scripts so once you get your gun into the game I'll just drop mine into the scene you see that it's quite big um, if you have a look at this gun we've got the body we've got the hammer which is a separate game object and we also have the uh, magazine which can be removed and the same for the slide which we can animate back and forwards and the uh, trigger as well okay so to set this up easily on our character I'm just going to bring that up a little bit and I'll drop the game view down here and I'm just going to resize this pistol so I've done mine to scale all 0 0.05 and I'm just going to grab this pistol and drop it on the first person character and what we can do now is just come to this little cog here and choose reset position and this will actually put it if you have a look in the scene view at the top here you can see it's put it right there in our camera so it's currently a little bit behind the camera's view at the moment so if we just drag it out you'll see that's our pistol there I'm just going to rotate mine a little bit still looks quite big maybe if I pull it out a little bit okay I might actually just leave mine like that for now just maybe drag it up just a tiny bit okay so set your gun up how you want yours and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move this back up the top I'm going to resize our window and we can actually go ahead and make the pistol for this gun but before we actually do that make the pistol script I just want to make on the first person character which is the uh, camera I just want to make an empty game object so if you click on that and then right click and create empty you can press F2 to rename it and I'm going to call this shoot point and we're going to be using raycast but I'm just going to use this um, shoot point to make it easy so that we can um, have the scripts on the different guns and just get hold of this shoot point so that we know so the game knows sorry that we want to shoot from this point which is going to be right in the middle of the camera the reason I'm doing this is because if you just made this script um, that I'm making now and stuck it on the gun it would not work properly because it wouldn't be shooting from the middle of the camera when you made your crosshair okay so just go ahead and make a shoot point uh, originally this was just set to zero like right in the middle there so all I'm going to do is just bring it out a little bit um, 
0.5 is probably a bit much. Maybe I'll just bring it out to 0.2 like that. Okay, so we've got our shoot point and we've got our Makarov attached to the uh, first person character. So you can go ahead and click on the actual um, gun itself and go to add component. And we can just make a new script. And if we open this script up, I'll just really quickly tidy mine up how I want it. And now we're ready to go. So we need to add some um, variables or values of what we want this gun to actually do. So for a basic gun, we can either have a rigid body uh, type gun that shoots a rigid body projectile, or we can have the actual ray car set up, which we're going to use. So we're going to use an invisible ray that's going to shoot out from that shoot point. It's going to hit something, and then we can collect some information about what it hits, and uh, yeah, do things according to that. So first of all, we're going to need the uh, raycast hit, and you generally just call this hit. And we're also going to need ammunition. So I think later on we'll make a separate script, and we'll have the ammunition as static. Um, yeah, static values so that we can actually access them very easily, but for this we'll just set it up in this script itself. So I'll make it an int and actually first I'll make it serialize field int and we'll call this current ammo. We'll call it current ammo because later on we will actually do reloading so we'll probably have our current ammo which is the ammo in the magazine and then we'll have the carried ammo which is uh, any spare ammunition we're carrying on the person so we've got our ammo we're also going to need some kind of fire rate so I'll just comment this so we know what it's for and we can do Serialize field and we can do a float rate of fire and then underneath that we don't need to serialize this field because we want to see this one in the inspector but this second float we don't need to see so this one can be next fire and you'll see what these are for in a second. Um, we can actually just set next fire to zero here because we actually want that value to be zero. And also we will do a range, so how far this gun's gonna actually shoot. So <clears throat> we can do actually serialize field float. weapon weapon range okay so that'll basically do for the the very basic setup of this gun so now we can actually write the method that's going to be for the actual shooting itself so void shoot and <clears throat> in this the first thing that we're going to want to check is if we have actually waited the amount of time we need to wait before the gun can shoot. So to start off with, we want the gun to be able to shoot without waiting any amount of time. So we'll say if time dot time is greater than next fire. So if the time in the game is is larger than next fire, which is zero. Um, and then we need to get this timer set so that the, the shot after this shot is going to be the rate of fire, whatever we set this to. So then we can say um, next fire equals time dot time plus rate of fire. So what this is going to do is next fire is set to zero so then we're going to add on the rate of fire after we've fired the first shot so if we set this rate of fire to one second it's going to shoot the first shot and then we're going to have to wait one second before we shoot the next shot 
Um, what else do we need? We probably need to deduct some ammunition. So we'll say current ammo minus minus. So we're going to take one away from the current ammo. And now we're going to check the actual um, raycast itself. So if physics.raycast and this is going to be the position um, as you can see it says here we've got the uh, physics.raycast we've got a vector 3 and this is the origin so this is the actual point where the ray is going to start so if you go back into the game that's the shoot point that we've actually made here so we're going to need to reference that um, shoot point so we can actually use that so I might just put it up here and just do um, serialize field and we can do transform shoot point. And now we can put this um, as our origin position. So shoot point dot position. And we need to also put a direction that we want it to go. So we can go uh, shoot point dot forward. And then we need to say out hit, which will allow us to get some information about what we actually hit. And then all we need to do for this one is just put in our weapon range. So what this is going to do is, is shoot out the invisible ray from the shoot point position. It's going to shoot it straight out forward. And if it hits something within the uh, weapon range, then we're going to have a couple more checks here to see um, what we actually hit. So we can say if hit.transform dot tag is equal to enemy and then we can just do a debug dot log and say hit enemy so if we hit something a game object that's tagged as enemy we're going to get a debug a debug dot log sorry it's just a, just a message in the actual um, console it'll display a message in here that says that we've hit the enemy and then we can just say else for now and we'll just copy this and just say hit something else Okay, so we hit the enemy, it's going to say hit enemy. If we hit anything else that's got a collider on it, it's going to say hit something else. So I'll just close this up for now. And we need to call this method. So we can call it in the um, update function will probably be best. So void update, and then we'll um, check for an input. So if we say if input dot we'll just say get button because it's got a rate of fire on it we can just hold the button and then it won't just shoot a heap of bullets it'll only shoot according to what we set the rate of time the rate of fire sorry so input dot get button and that button is going to be fire one and I'm going to use fire one because if you go back into unity and go to edit up here if you go to project settings and then click on input, these are all the inputs that Unity already has set up in here. And if you look here, you'll see Fire 1, and that's the one we're going to use. And its name is Fire 1, so to use it, we use that name. If we, It's got a positive button of left control, so if we press left control, it will actually shoot. But the alternative positive, positive button is mouse 0, which is left mouse button. And by using Fire 1, you automatically set it up for... Um, for joystick or like an Xbox controller or something like that. So I'm going to use Fire 1. So 
if we push, uh, if we're holding the button, uh, left mouse button, we should probably check if we've got ammo as well and current ammo is greater than zero then we want to call the uh, shoot function shoot method okay so we call that so save that and we'll go back into unity and what we might do is we'll just chuck a mock enemy in really fast so if you go to game object, 3D object, and uh, capsule, and then we'll just call this enemy for now. This is not going to be our enemy, enemy, don't stress guys. And that's already set up for us. We're just going to make sure that we actually tag this as enemy, because that's what we've got in our script. I've got a tag. You probably need to make a new tag in there. So go ahead and do that, and then to actually um, make sure you tag it as enemy. And also, we're probably going to need to see where we're shooting, so we'll make a really, really fast and easy crosshair. So, if you just right-click here and go to UI and select Image, you automatically get your canvas and an image. I'm just going to change this to um, scale with screen size, and I'm going to change mine to my screen resolution change yours to whatever your screen re uh, resolution is and now we should be good to go I'll click on 2D and then double click this image so that's our canvas and that is our image so for this image it's not in the center of the screen so to do that you can just open up the, um, the rec transform here and just on the anchors and just actually hold alt and then left click on that center one and it'll put it right in the center but this is going to be miles too big so I'm just going to hold shift and then scale it down from the corner so it's quite small and I'm going to go to the uh, sprite here and just change that to this round doorknob circle for now and make mine like a red dot site just a little bit of transparency and then of course that's not in the center anymore I'll just change this to um, crosshair it's a crosshair image and I'll go back to my anchors and just hold alt and put that back in the center and if we look in the game view now you'll see we've got our little red dot site. You can um, make that as big or small as you want. We probably do a, a different crosshair later on, but I really don't mind having a crosshair, to tell you the truth. I'll probably like it a little bit smaller than that, but I quite like just having a red dot like in games like Resident Evil and things like that. Um, the animated crosshairs, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't really, doesn't really worry me. I don't care about them. I just like having a dot, but we can also, we can make an animated crosshair or something like that later on that gets bigger and smaller. Um, yeah, definitely can do that if you guys want. So, back to our game, I'll turn it off 2D, make sure you turn it back off 2D. And we're going to have to set up a couple of things, so um, on the actual gun itself, we're going to need to put the uh, shoot point in. We're going to need to tell it how much ammo. I'll just say we've got 60 for now. The rate of fire, I'll say 0.2. And the range, I will say like 45. So if we go into the game now, this should work. So I'm in the game. I'll just... Actually, I won't maximize it yet. So if I open up the console down here... You'll see that I'm shooting and I'm not shooting at the enemy and it's saying hit something else and it's counting up every time I hit something else. And then if I shoot the enemy, you'll see it says hit enemy. So if I hold my finger down like that, it's shooting the enemy every 0.2 of a second, okay? And you can see up um, over here, our ammunition is going down as well. And when we get to zero ammunition, we should no longer be able to shoot like that. So nothing's happening. Okay, so that's the basic, uh, very basic setup of our pistol. We'll continue to work on this and improve it. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.